make a fourth part. I was already off doing other things. And then I realized I must, there's, it just came to me and I have to share a couple of more things. So one of the other things that I know really will make your life better and it has made mine better is realizing that not to wait for someone else to treat you to something but to give it to yourself um so for example if your boyfriend or your partner's gone or they never gave you flowers when you're shopping at the central market i used to come home with a bunch of poppies or tulips or roses it feels really good you put them in the middle of the table or in your bedroom when i was renting and just having a room and it feels really good to honor yourself and give yourself what you actually wanted as a symbol of romance or love or acknowledgement of beauty and cherishment, cherishing. So <clears throat> I, um, I learned that from the split up some people and getting hurt and then realizing, well, when you're hurt, feel it. And if you can't feel it yet and you just need to just spoil yourself to just elevate again and come into a new dimension, go and have that hot chocolate on your own it actually is quite amazing even if you're sad go to a coffee shop and order your favorite pasta dish or whatever it is and read a book or watch the people it's priceless even if it's raining even if the sun is shining wear that dress and go out by yourself get your hair changed and um, spoil yourself when maybe before you were not wanting to spend that money feel the difference it starts the ball rolling get a facial um you know um do some self exploration get a coach i really love this kind of thing and so a coach can be a workshop it can be a really good book where you do um, the workbook and really really commit to it can be great YouTubes. It could be downloading something and doing a home practice. It can all of that is is a beginning, and you you shape that. What is for how you can use it? What will actually work in your current situation? What your financials allow? What your living situation allows? And every little small thing makes such a difference. So you know it's very easy for us when we are stressed to get into that routine and run in the treadmill of the rat race and to put expectations on that actually have us neglect ourselves sometimes people notice that and sometimes they don't notice it until they're in burnout and until it's too late and until they're realizing that it's not feeling so good that it's depriving them of their own sense of connection and health and there's nothing more important than your own health and so you know getting a coach it might cost you, you know, two, three thousand for the year if you have a simple package with me. And whenever something happens, someone is there that totally sees you, loves you, honors you, will help you with tools, will help you to remember your own tools. That's how I work because it's great to learn new things. And I will always teach new things because you might go, wow, I never thought of this. But it's also awesome to remember and help you to remember what used to work for you. And to turn it into something useful now in this dimension so an ebook an audiobook audible these are more shallow but they can be life-changing as well especially if you go and journal or let them take you to another level right sometimes you might listen to an audiobook in the car and it makes you higher frequency which means you make a higher frequency decision of changing your job, um, you know, getting a weekly massage, getting a monthly mentoring, um, you know, joining a group, a collective of your vibration, which is powerful because the people around you affect you significantly. And to choose some people that are going to honor you and help you and not drag you down and let you be yourself is priceless, absolutely priceless. Mm. so I found I've always done that like not all the time but um, when I look back at my life there were always times when I would do a course or a workshop or um, travel somewhere to meet someone that was teaching something or to up level my own um, skill set nothing quite like doing a course with the right person um, a place where you're honored and where you are actually 
not taken back because some causes can take you back into feeling worse and some causes can really honor you and give you the tool not make you codependent but really set you free and let you flourish and um, you know you need to find that match that's your responsibility really you can't blame anybody and that's part of learning as well for example i've noticed that women that have dad issues and that have an abusive relationship with their dad or had or whatever it was they will tend to prefer a male teacher usually it's not always because they're still seeking that male loving guidance on an unconscious level and I've also observed quite commonly that if they haven't healed it and they're still quite wounded and it's a deep thing, not shallow, they will attract a predator type of teacher that will have them in their vulnerable position and exploit that. I've heard about that way too often. Normally I wouldn't have said this, but I've just heard about it a lot. It happens a lot because we will keep attracting that. And then often those women get the hinge and the, the hinge they get the hunch something doesn't feel right but i'm still drawn that way and um, then either they have to be exploited or someone points it out or they wake up or they so like they're guided to step back and um yeah that's how that thing feels uh, feeds itself so yeah i've been on retreats i've gone on silent retreats to india been on initiations i have uh, gone on pilgrimages i have spent time on my own fasting i have had mentors I have booked into great courses online and in person. I'm always exploring more, uh, dedicating myself to a particular teaching, uh, reading incredible books by masters. And um, yeah, if you are wanting to really break through and break free, a coach is amazing. A coach is amazing because they have the whole package. They understand how the mind works, how we hypnotize ourselves and give you tools and they're there for a longer period rather than lifting you up and you lift yourself up and then the next problem comes and then you might struggle for a few years rather than for maybe a week and then you can move forward. So it can be an accelerated time of shift. It can take a lot of courage to ask for that. It can take courage, but it's also an unconscious fear of change. And as we change, often the unconscious will be like, hang on a sec, is that even safe? So far, I've been alive and I've got a few friends and I'm still living. So change can feel exciting, but also kind of nerve wracking. And that's normal. So a coach will recognize that and will notice what you're ready for and that you are holding yourself back out of fear, out of an old program of not feeling safe to change and worried perhaps about what the people around you will feel and how they will respond or react even. And then how can you handle that? So coach can really help you with that because they have been trained. Like I've spent literally just on coaching itself, purely NLP and hypnosis, $17,000, right? And besides that, the yoga coaching, the yoga training for 5,000, then the experience of that, then the retreats and the initiations in India and in the ashrams. And then my you know, the Reiki, where every time you grow and you learn, massage, natural therapies, diploma, my reflections on being a scientist and observing and, and learning and integrating that, my teaching and experience of teaching, meditation to children, people with cancer, people in the corporate world, my learning about quantum physics and consciousness, on weekends, not going out, but watching what the bleep do we know, watching uh, quantum physics discussions on YouTube, reading about it blissfully, um, <clears throat> applying that stuff, learning how communication affects us, how um, empowering others will help them to understand you more and create that shift and how, for example, nonviolent communication is a whole art form as well. And there's just so much how we can empower each other. Um, there's studies on how you really can listen in mirroring back what you're hearing so that you know whether you're being understood or not. Um, it's endless. And I've learned so much just from even doing home births three times, breathing and letting go and connecting to each child differently, following what feels right for them and me. Mm -hmm. and, and working through letting go of a marriage and embracing a spiritual divorce, still creating that bond of friendship 
in an ongoing way that is healthy for both of us to move on. Um, reading about entities and meeting people that are dark and understanding how that affects the mind and how it can affect your chakras and your your, your capacity to flow and feel free to express and breathe and, and move forward. I've had healings. I've had um, I've had help with with all sorts of things uh, when I felt I needed it. I definitely enrolled and sought people and a variety to find the one that works for me. And I always have that criteria. I need to feel free and honored for who I am. And I know that even if at that time it's not the perfect match, there's still a great learning and a gift from everybody and anything from my students from my clients from the people that I've been a client to and a student to so there's nothing ever to be ashamed of to ask for help and to feel even if you're really experienced that humbleness is actually the crown chakra gift when you open the throat and the brow and of course the heart and the solar and the sacral and the base when you come to the crown you have a humility and you realize there's infinite potential and when you realize there's infinite potential you actually realize there's no way that you can hold all that information. Every human has their own pillar of light that is tr transmitting intelligence. And so then go to another specialist that has mastered something. Maybe that has mastered the spiritual divorce, that has mastered the, the earthy pregnancy, that has mastered the grief of child loss, that has mastered running a business while being a parent, that has mastered f attracting a soulmate, that has mastered their financial situation, that has mastered a health problem and has truly honored themselves and overcome, you know, a big problem physically through their practice. So again, um, I've been super discerning about that because in this world, in these dark ages of Kali Yuga, there are, unfortunately, I didn't know that always, but there are many teachers that say they're going to teach something but they actually are just what can you say they're not really interested in your highest good and in your thriving they want to have you to pay them money and they want you to give them a good reputation and perhaps they help you a little bit but they're not fully there and they're maybe not honest that they are still working through their own stuff and some of that can even transmit onto you especially in yoga with sound baths if you're with a person at yoga or in a sound bath or in a healing that hasn't cleared their energy and isn't really respecting that and having that shower and clean clothes and intention, you could be attaching, getting their thoughts, their negativity. You could be absorbing because you're very open and vulnerable when you receive a healing. So therefore, I choose super carefully who can massage my body. Where do I open up my soul? Where do I lie and, and open up? And to what degree? So in that process, I've learned to open and close my chakras, to open and close my field, to expand it, to know when to put protection around me. Not that I'm scared, but it's like navigating. It's like when it's raining, I'm not scared, but I have an umbrella. Unless I want to be wet, then I take it off and dance in the rain. So, so it is on your spiritual journey, literally. And so you are so multifaceted. The more you come into the light and into yourself, the more that humility has to expand so you can open to infinite potential. And you can use the breath, your chakra consciousness, your body, your diet, your thoughts. There are so many ways in which I can teach from my own experience and own you know, education and practice how you can get to that place and how we block it so you can see it and how we can rewire it. And I love that. And so when I learned all that stuff in NLP and hypnosis as well, it was like what the yogis have said and what I knew. But this is another language of explaining it and another detail into the psychology which yogic books have in them as well. Um, and I love it because I like to be able to converse in different languages and to see that effect in a different way. Same thing, different technique. So there's also access bars, the hands-on healing that I offer these days because I wanted to offer something that doesn't require chatting and intellect or even meditation and relaxation, but something I offer where you can go into that space. How amazing. How amazing. And I know you have just as much to offer and there's people that want to learn from you. And so discerning that and going out and letting yourself say, hey, I'm going to spend $2,000 this year to have a mentor. I'm going to spend so and so much on that and putting that in writing in your diary makes a huge difference self-love self-commitment and that's what i'm all about and you will thrive thank you